And we, sh we are truly lucky to have Dr. B. Shanta, who is a senior consultant, the Department of Glaucoma Services at Shankar Netraya, again, a very veteran surgeon and a very senior glaucomatologist. And she is going to be talking on preferred practice guidelines and comprehensive algorithm guiding initial medical management of glaucoma. On to you, Dr. Shanta. The next speaker uh, to be ready is Dr. Harsh Kumar, uh, just an information. And... Uh, you can start. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. So the key goals of medical management of glaucoma is to preserve vision while maintaining the quality of life. And the most significant risk factor which can be treated remains persistently elevated intraocular pressure. So to what extent should IOP be lowered? The target IOP that you're trying to achieve would depend on the baseline IOP, risk and field changes, the rate of progression, and the quality of life as well as the life expectancy. The baseline IOP can be obtained from patients' old records and patients already on treatment if possible, from a diurnal variation at the office or over 24 hours, especially for presumed normal tension glaucoma. To what extent should IOP be lowered in ocular hypertension? The OHGS has showed us that at least a 20% targeted uh, reduction in IOP reduced the risk of progression from 4.4% in the treated group versus 9.5% in the no treatment group. Similarly, the early manifest glaucoma treatment trial showed us that at least 25% uh, drop in IOP reduced progression in 45% of the treated versus 62% in the no treatment group. And the collaborative initiated glaucoma treatment trial showed us that 35 to 48% reduction in moderate and severe glaucoma brought the mean progression to almost zero during the follow-up. These numbers are rough guidelines. Established target ranges than a single number and constantly reset the target to e each individual depending on the therapeutic response and the rate of progression of glaucomatous damage. So which drugs would you choose? There are drug factors and patient factors as uh, mentioned here. Drug efficacy you have to look at in terms of drop in intraocular pressure, in terms of reduction of diurnal variation, and the duration of effect. So this is a nice meta-analysis which looks at the IOP lowering effects of individual drugs. So something between 15 to 23% drop is seen with these drugs. Timolol comes interim, and the PJ analogs give the best drop in IOP. If you look at the diurnal control of IOP also, the PJ analog score of the other drugs with the beta blockers coming in between. If you look at safety issues, again, the ocular safety, the PJ analogs do a little better, uh, though you do get some conjunctival hyperemia. And with systemic uh, tolerability issues also, the PJ analog score. So when you start therapy, establish a baseline, start with monotherapy, choose the drug according to the treatment being, uh, the condition being treated, Remember the systemic medications and disorders, the target IOP required, the simplest regimen possible with the least adverse effects, and remember the contraindications. So there's a case in point for a 39-year-old male with IOP around 25 to 26 open angles, and you can see that the right eye disc is fairly okay, the left eye shows a nerve fiber layer defect, so this is a early glaucoma. You could require at least a 25% drop in IOP, so you have a choice of either non-sective beta blockers or PG analogs. So we did a monocular therapeutic trial for this patient. In the left eye, since there was a nerve fiber layer defect there, and you can see that there was a significant difference between the uh, two eyes. The second case is a patient who's around with IOP around 24 and 26, hypertensive on calcium channel blockers. This was the disc and uh, field changes, about a moderate glaucoma. We started off with Timolol, got a 25% drop in IOP, but over a period of five years, the IOP started creeping up, so we changed to latinoprost. There was progression, so we uh, combined Timolol and Latinoprost over the next few years. And you can see that the patient continued to progress, though slowly. So we changed to a combination therapy with Timolol and Bermonidin and continued Latino Latinoprost. So points illustrated are first substitute, then add, reset the target, use combination therapy wherever possible, follow up with visual fields at least once in six months, and redefine the baseline visual field at the appropriate time. Systemic medications, you have to remember, since systemic beta blockers are less effective and uh, topical beta blockers are less effective when systemic beta blockers are being used and may actually adverse, increase adverse effects such as nocturnal hypertension. And uh, many of our patients are elderly on multiple drugs and systemic uh, drug interaction is possible. We also need to remember the drugs do not work for those who do not use them. So persistent by drug class, again, the PJ analogs, uh, PJ analogs go. The patients on latinoprost did better than those on uh, beta blockers in uh, maintaining their therapy. Is mechanism of action a consideration? You try to pair drugs which complement each other in action. Those which decrease aqueous production should be combined with those which increase outflow either through the trabecular meshwork or through the US cradle outflow pathway. 
So these are the advantages of combination therapies. Increase compliance, re equal efficacy as the individual constituents, reduce the washout effect from rapid sequential application of the additional medications, and reduce load of preservatives. And these are, we have a large armamentarian now in India as well. But is medical treatment really benign? A lot of our patients over a period of time develop ocular surface disease, which can go as high as 48 to 50 percent, increases with the increasing number of medications being used, and increased prevalence in elderly patients with dry eye disease. So we have preservative free medications now, and they have to found to be as efficacious as the preserved medication. So what is maximum medical treatment? Ultimately, patients will require multiple medications to control the IOP. So this is the minimum number and concentration of drugs which give you the maximum drop in IOP with the least side effects. Usually it is a maximum of three drugs. Use of a fourth drug only gives additional drop of IOP of about 15 to 20% in 40 to 60% of patients at single time points but has poor long term effect. So once a fourth medication is, need, is needed, you have to uh, uh, inform the patient that over a period of time, the next step in treatment is required, either laser tuberculosis or surgery, depending on the individual scenario. These are some of the newer drugs in our armamentarium now. We have uh, the ROC inhibitors, which increase tubercular outflow. We have combinations of ROC inhibitors with latinoprost. The conjunctival hyperema is a problem with all of them. So in conclusion, establish a baseline, establish a target IOP, teach nasal acrimal duct occlusion to prevent the side effects, substitute with more efficacious drugs in case of inadequate effect, and use combination drugs when more than one drug is needed. Thank you.